Hey there guys, it's Metro, and today we are back with another Mythic Plus 5-man tier list, this time updating the tanking list we made a few months back. In the list, we will be ranking the tanking options based on their efficacy and Mythic Plus 5-man dungeons. This video is relevant as of Monday, May 15th, so keep that in mind, and things will be changing as we move into future patches. I would also like to remind you that these are my opinions, purely, based on info that I have from hundreds if not thousands of Mythic Plus 5-mans, as well as parsing websites like WoW Progress and Warcraft Logs. Because there are only six tanks, I am able to discuss them all in much greater depth as well. Things that weigh highly are utility and how big of an impact the tank itself can have on the dungeon group. Every tank's job is, of course, to never die, so that is less important to me than other things, but it is still factored in and discussed heavily. For each tank, we will also be discussing the new traits and their impact in five mans moving forward. So that's that. Let's get right into it. Tier 1, number 1, number 1 overall is Protection Paladin. They are currently the total package, have the widest CD range of all tanks and the highest damage of all tanks, which for the first time is actually acknowledged by Blizzard in their Mage Tower Challenge. They have multiple unique tools for defense, including an immunity in Bubble, a physical immunity in Bop, or a magic immunity in Spell Warding, especially for Necrotic Weeks, a Cheat Death that doubles as an offensive CD in AD, a 25% one minute CD that hits all targets close with an Eye of Tear, your traditional shield wall type ability on a five minute CD in Guardian of Ancient Kings, and are equipped with one of the strongest active mitigation abilities in the entire game within Shield of the Righteous. On top of this, they have incredible self-sustain within Absorbs, and in the right situation, Hand of the Protector, Bulwark of the Order, Golden Tray, and Lay on Hands could have the highest impact of any self-healing in the game. In terms of damage, you'll be hard pressed to find abilities that hit harder than Avenger's Shield and Shield of the Righteous. And they also have two offensive CD options with Seraphim and Avenging Wrath, aka Wings. In terms of utility, they have the same as any Paladin spec, but slightly more. Bob and Land Hands can save lives in certain affixes, but have limited usage otherwise. Their abilities to heal groups with things like their 90 tier talents, Judgment of Light, or Consecrated Ground can be useful, and when combined with Hand of the Protector, can actually lead to a sizable amount of healing done over the course of the dungeon. The Aegis of Light 90 put talent also has some niche utility during the bursting affix. In terms of new talents, they are below average. The four point trait simply increases parry percent, which is fine for defense, but has no dynamic usage like the other tank's four point traits. The one point trait is Defender of Truth, and it's a relatively good trait, especially for dungeons, as you'll be using AD on CD as an offensive ability, and the extra absorb you'll get at the end will match up with the time your burst will have dropped off. The Golden Trade has been nerfed heavily since its conception and is one of the worst at this point in terms of tanks, giving them only 8% efficacy on Shield of the Righteous while following Judgment, which does not particularly line up well with Burst. If there was a con, it would be that they are tied to position of Consecrate and the ability to hit the target while in Consecrate. Without that, they are extremely flimsy. All of their offense is also tied to defense, so it does require a lot of planning ahead to be able to maximize both levels. Overall, I feel like Paladin is the total package though and de facto number one on this list. Tier one number two number two overall is the blood DK. They have absolutely absurd self-healing to the point that they can effectively solo parts of dungeons and will regularly out heal the healer especially on themselves. They are nearly unkillable on large packs with certain CDs up such as Umbilicus Eternus which is the golden trait that affects vamp blood. Bone Storm which thanks to a recent buff from one to two percent means you will heal for your full health over 10 seconds against just 5 mobs, and Dancing Rune Weapon, which gives 40% parry for 16 seconds now, thanks to new traits, while still having all the offensive upsides. They also can have an enormous health pool, even higher than bears if done right, all thanks to Vamp Blood's uptime and power being augmented via the Red Thirst talent and a fourth point in Vampiric Fangs, as well as the Ossuary talent and our new Golden Trait Soul Drinker. To me, Vampiric Blood is the most dynamic tanking ability in the in entire game and has enormous application. It synergizes with every single tool Blood has and as is, keeps Blood atop this list. Ever nerfed though, it will quickly spiral them down to the bottom. In 7.2, they became even stronger thanks to the new traits we received, of which they easily have the best around. Their four point trait gives more healing from Death Strike, which then synergizes with the golden trait Soul Drinker. But the real king here is Vampiric Aura, the new one point trait, which causes our artificial 
impact ability to give the entire five-man group leech cap of 20%. If used properly, this is the strongest non-healer ability in the entire game and lasts a whopping 15 seconds. Their new golden trait also allows them to push their health pool even higher and under the right conditions allows them to break 15 million health with Nighthold gearing. In terms of utility, they have the best kit of all tanks, bar none. Battle res on its own is incredibly useful and can save a wipe or actually be used for intentionally skipping, albeit rare. Death Grip remains the single best utility in the entire game for any role or class as repositioning some mobs in some dungeons equates to a massive DPS increase. Gorfiend's Grasp was also buffed in 7.2 and is even more useful now thanks to the talent, especially for packs of casters or even just as a second grip option for pesky mobs. And of course Vampiric Aura, which we talked about, rivals things like Mops, Elemental Shaman, Ancestral Guidance in power and has the potential to fully heal a group every second on large AoE packs. They also still add Blood Mirror, which makes me yearn for the days of Dark Sim, but I have yet to hear of a home run usage for it in Five Mans, as opposed to the trickery people were using it for in Emerald Nightmare. If anyone does know of a place to use it, please let me know. If I had to pick cons, I would easily have to say that they have the worst passive mitigation in the entire game, making them incredibly weak in the first one or two globals without any preparation. They also have the lowest single target damage of all six tanks, with almost no way to improve it outside of trinkets and gearing. This is a huge problem for dungeons and also leads to another problem with poor damage overall for both single and AoE, outside of CDs like Bonestorm and Dancing Rune Weapons. The pros are the reason they're number two on this list, but the cons are the reason they aren't number one. If they ever get a noticeable DPS improvement, especially on single target at any point, it will bring them in line with how they were in WAD, and this will once again make them the king of dungeons. Tier 2, number 1, number 3 overall is the Guardian Druid. They really haven't gotten any weaker, it's just that the other tanks above them have gotten that much stronger, and the meta has shifted around that. Bears themselves have some of the best mitigation in the game, with Rage of the Sleeper, Iron Fur, and their naturally high health pool thanks to Mastery, continuing to make them the best tank around for actually reducing damage and preventing deaths. And even after the 7.2.5 change is coming, they will still likely continue to be juggernauts of five mans. In terms of new traits, they are above average. Good, but not great. The four point trait allows Moonfire to reduce the damage mobs do to you, and that can be very strong in the right situations, especially in dungeons with high volume pulls. The one point trait called Flesh Knitting gives Frenzied Regeneration another charge, which is obviously extremely powerful, especially now that you can get a fourth point in Wild Flesh talent and considering the legendary option. Their new golden trait, Positive Outlook, which is a great pun, is unfortunately very boring compared to other tanks, but is a nice passive way to get more value out of Thrash, and rounds out their offensive power very nicely. Bears continue to have incredible group-wide utility. Just like the Blood Death Knight, they are the only other tank to have Battle Res, which has a huge value on the tank roll, especially one that has such a large health. They still have Stampeding Roar as well, with the option for the talent, and this remains the best group-wide mobility option anyone can bring. They still have Ink Cap Roar and Typhoon, which can still function as an interrupt if needed, but have weak application outside of that, other than kiting. Entangling Roots also does not have a great case to my knowledge, if anyone knows otherwise let me know, but it's still a neat thing to have. Overall, they have the second best utility of all tanks. In terms of cons, they are the target of many nerfs because of their overwhelming strength in raids. Another problem they have is that their mobility is tied to abilities that are difficult to use to their fullest for actual mobility. For for example, dash being tied to cat form means you can't run fast while actually tanking things. They remain the strongest physical mitigator and fit the bill of what we traditionally would think of as a quote unquote tank. Their damage is good and their utility can be incredibly strong but doesn't always have a great impact on the dungeon. They are still a great choice for a beginner and will continue to be an amazing option for keys with enormous difficulty. Tier 2, number 2, the Vengeance Demon Hunter. Vengeance remains one of the most versatile and flexible tanks capable of doing insane things that no other tank can even dream about but I find weaker overall at your typical standstill tanking. They're above average in terms of self-healing and the best in terms of mobility and kiting but feel in between in terms of mitigation and actual damage. They have the potential to do a lot of damage especially in burst situations but not as consistently as paladins. They have the potential to be incredible mitigators but a lot of their burst relies on defensive abilities that also do damage making it 
more difficult to maximize their defense and force them ultimately to rely more on self-healing more than most tanks. They still have a cheat death, but it has been nerfed severely. And as a side note, they are easily the most active tank ever and require a real heads up effort for tanking dungeons. Honestly, they play more like a mobile DPS than an actual tank. And that is one of the things I both love and hate about the Vengeance Demon Hunter. In terms of utility, they have a very wide variety, all of which range from being supreme to utterly useless, depending on the situation. Most of their perceived strength comes from their ability to travel large distances in a very short time. And this makes them by and large the best tank for kiting anything, especially when paired with Glide. In application, Sigil of Chains can act as a poor man's Gorfiend's Grasp with all the same perks, but it is a lot harder to use. This alone would make them very strong, but they also have a sigil that can fear mobs and one that can silence mobs, effectively allowing them to prevent three back-to-back -back casts on all mobs within or giving them the time they need to begin kiting. They also have the unique pleasure of a 20-yard interrupt that also generates resources. In terms of their new traits, theirs can be particularly strong, especially in five mans. Their four-point trait extends metamorphosis by two seconds, which bolsters both defense and office yet again. Their one-point erupting soul trait makes soul cleave already one of your best damage dealers do even more damage. Their golden trait, flaming soul, allows you to keep fiery brand up even longer, which again, double dips for damage and defense. Overall, these three new traits are solid, but extra points in their old traits are really what help vengeance out. Thanks to traits like aura of pain, fiery demise, and infernal force, all increasing fire damage you do, which again, double dips into healing. The cons of the vengeance demon hunter is that they require a lot of activity and mental effort to be able to maximize, especially in terms of balancing offense and defense. Their resource comes and goes very quickly, so you need to be planning ahead on almost every global. The other problems I find with vengeance is that their extreme mobility often outpaces their group members. It seems amazing in a vacuum and on paper, but regularly I find myself infernal striking out of range of healers or damage healers and effectively making things harder for the group instead of actually making them easier. Overall, they are quite a unique tank with their utility and playstyle. If you find other tanks boring, give vengeance a shot because their abilities are unlike anything you've ever seen in the tank role. I consider them to be the second strongest damage dealer, and they do have strong self-healing and mitigation, but ultimately their kit is good but not great at anything other than actual mobility, and that rarely matters. Tier 3, number 1, number 5 overall is the Brewmaster. Their mitigation model continues to require some finesse and a healthy understanding of the situation, but if used properly, easily rivals druids. Their largest stumbling point in 5 mans to me continues to be magic damage, and their lack of strong options outside of their typical mitigation. They have a thin selection in terms of CDs in total, mostly complicated by how fortifying brew works. Zen Med is typically useless without the legendary, but does have a great case for predictable large chunk of damage, like the Shadow Bolt Volley at the end of Black Rick Hold. Their niche still remains, as I've said it is all along, exceptional at shrugging off one giant predictable hit, and this still holds true in 5 mans. I find their damage output to be below average, especially single targets, and with certain talent choices, I find the rotation to be very clunky. They are strong if all you care about is reducing large physical hits, but with their below average self-healing, I find that a Brewmaster will need more of the healer's attention than any other tank currently. In terms of utility, they only have two real assets they can claim. They are one of the two tanks with an AoE stun, and they have incredible mobility. Their AoE stun leg sweep can be very strong, especially in some affixes, but the more I tank dungeons, the more I realize stuns as a tank are just not needed anymore. In the past, having a stun on four of the five tanking specs meant they all had a way to reduce damage on those massive pulls of challenge mode. Now, that's still the case, but it rarely comes into play in the new five-man model, where people rarely pull more than one pack of anything. The same notion applies to their mobility outside of necrotic, but does allow them to get out of a few mechanics easier. Just like their survivability, monk utility is best for significantly challenging dungeons and useless for easy ones. In terms of new traits, they have some of the better ones for sure. Their four-point traits increase the damage of blackout strike by 20%, which obviously is a very important ability that already hit relatively hard. Their new one-point trait is stave off, which gives keg smash a usage 20% chance to strike twice. Not a huge fan of these RNG type abilities, but keg smash already has such an enormous upside that even though they will only proc one in five times here, it already sounds overpowered to me, especially when you compare it to the thrash trait we talked about earlier, and that's a golden trait. Quick sip, their golden trait, is a nice passive benefit to their core spammable active mitigation and should make a large difference in high difficulty dungeons. Cons for Brewmaster is that they are still recovering from an insane bias 
this against them earlier. This was the result of their model changing so heavily that they were nearly unplayed early. And this led to people believing that they were also unplayable, which Blizzard had to step in and dispel. Their rotation and mitigation feel very unrewarding to me for the content I'm doing. But I do feel like they would climb up this list if we were talking about intense physical damage coming in regularly. My biggest con though is that I was in love with the guard and elusive brew model. And I just can't seem to fall back in love with the new model. And also that their damage has been lowered so many times since the start of Mop and the Days of Vengeance. They remain one of the best raid tanks, no doubt, but their mitigation model, as well as their lack of reliable self-healing and damage, makes me long for the days of dizzying haze and guard. The changes Monk have overcome are probably for the best, but I can't help but think they were more useful in terms of five-man dungeons before. Number two tier tree. Last overall is Protection Warrior. The best way I can describe Protection Warrior is that they remind me of Mario in Super Smash Brothers. They are very well-rounded and do almost everything pretty well, but nothing exceptionally. Their damage is strong and flexible with and without CDs, but not higher than Paladins. Their mitigation is stronger even after all the nerfs, but not better than Druids or Monks. Their mobility with leap and two charges is strong, but not better than Demon Hunters or Monks. Their utility is decent with Shockwave and Warbringer and also Inspiring Presence, but nothing compared to Death Knights or frankly any other tank. On top of this, compared to any other class, especially Vengeance, their playstyle feels extremely slow and honestly a bit clunky. In terms of utility, they are in the same boat as Monk. They have decent mobility and an AoE stun. Their stun is better than Monk's, as it's on a shorter CD if used properly and actually deals damage. But their mobility is a bit worse, as charge requires targets and typically will take you less distance than a roll would because of that. They also have Inspiring Presence, which people insist is useful in five mans, but I suppose I am just too used to Vampiric Aura to feel it's any stronger. In terms of new traits, they are horribly bland in my eyes. Their four point trait increases damage prevented by blocking and that is just as passive as it gets, right up there with Paladin's four point trait. Their one point trait, Gleaming Scales, shears up a small hole in their mitigation, that being magic damage, but makes me miss the days of mass spell reflect from wad challenge modes and doesn't strike me as something they actually need. Their golden trait, Naltharian's Thunder is interesting, but Thunderclap does very little to impress me. And the fact that it's only 1% at a time means it's fairly weak in five mans. As thunderclapping five times mean you are fighting things for quite a while. It seems even more strange that it's essentially less effective than the Moonfire trait Druids have that we discussed earlier. And that theirs was a four point trait, but here it's the warrior's golden trait. In terms of cons, obviously, despite good damage, it's very easy to output and borderline boring. Their mitigation is still strong, but it's been nerfed so many times that I feel like we're getting back to shield barrier levels of intention. Despite all this, I actually really enjoy playing my warrior, but I'm regularly left reminded of days when they had a very intricate and dedicated rage and stance setup. Comparing those days to now makes me feel like it's an entirely different class and spec. I would recommend that you pick warrior if you are new to tanking, as ignore pain is a very, very straightforward way to reduce damage. But if you are looking for dynamic ways to challenge yourself and impact the dungeon group, pretty much any other tank will be far more appropriate. The number one reason they are last on this list is because everything they do well, another tank simply does better. So that's the list. What'd you think? If you made it this far, bravo. You've done better than most. You were very patient. And once again, I ask for your patience when you're about to leave a comment. If you watched the whole video, you probably heard something you didn't like. Maybe it's about the tank you play or something that you feel I just got wrong. If you feel that way, I would very much appreciate some professionalism. Instead of just hating on the video or insulting me directly, why not write a detailed reason why I was wrong? These videos take a long time to create, so I would appreciate if you would respect that and not just dislike and leave a rude comment because you simply disagree with my opinion. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tier list, which will be for healers and will come out after Tomb of Sargeras has been out for a little bit. And then after the dust settles, we'll take another crack at the DPS list. Thanks for watching.